everything looks good. Let's see if the Instagram thing is working. Well, let's see. I'm looking at the streams. Oh, Ooh. it is. What's happening? <laughs> Hold on. Everything's good. I just have to mute it. Hold on. Just, yeah, just. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm trying to figure out how to mute this. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I don't know. We may have just lost Instagram. Well, we, we see, got YouTube, so. Yeah, but see, see if it goes off in just a second. See if it stays on. Let me know if it goes off because I just had to close it down because it was double doubling everything. So are we still still We're on good. Instagram? We're All good. right. How exciting. Oh my gosh. Very cool. Well, we have one, we have one watcher. I guess that's you. Um, but <laughs> it's always good to watch my own content. So you know. Yeah. If it's 100%. not good, then I'll see if I'm gonna leave it up. No, just kidding. I love it. I love it. Um yeah, it is. We're streaming on Instagram. Very cool. All right. Let's get to it. Here we go. Got my phone turned off. All right. Here we go. Okay. Today on the show, we have author and top producer Janine Sasso from uh, Coldwell Banker in Chicago. Let me tell you more about Janine. Now, Janine Sasso is on a mission to impact more agents with young children to earn their dream income. Now, forget about time blocking and say goodbye to expensive mailing companies or mailer companies. Janine is going to share her proven lead generation tactics that have been ranked the number one lead generation technique for decades but with a modern twist for today's busy agent. Janine was tired of choosing between a career of being a mom and discovered how geographic farming has allowed her to scale her success quickly, uh, mainly with mailer marketing and community events. And before you go, I don't want to do mailers. I am telling you, you want to do mailers. Stay with us. We will convince you in this, uh, this conversation why that's important. To learn more about Janine, I want you to go visit her website. There'll be a link to this in the show notes. Thehyperlocalagent.com is the hub of everything Janine. You can also find her on all the different social channels except Twitter. She is uh, she is not a Twitter person. I don't even know who is Twitter person anymore in real estate, but she is on every other social channel, including TikTok. We will have links to her social channels in the show notes, but just do a search for Janine Sasso and find her. And also, she has an amazing book that I want you to check out called Success with Real Estate Mailers. Uh, and it, that is on Amazon. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. Janine, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me and um, introducing me to your audience. Like, this is going to be a fun one. Because we're going to convince people, right? Convince people that direct mail is not dead. I hope so. So I am holding up right now a, a handwritten card, which if you're listening, you won't hear this from one of my last guests. And I we were talking about um, we were talking about mailers, and in this case, handwritten cards. And I was saying to him, because uh, he, he's a big fan of writing handwritten uh, cards, and I know we're going to be talking about something slightly different, but just sending things through the mail. And I said, um, how often, how many cards do you get a, a year from anybody, you know, outside of your birthday, outside of, you know, the holiday? I mean, just like random, hey, I'm thinking about you cards. He goes, I get about one a month. And I was like, you get one a month? I get like one a year. So I'm, I'm holding one up from the guy who I actually said that to. And he, after the thing, maybe he was just trying to be funny. He wrote me one. And so I got my one for the year. But this is how big the opportunity really is to to send mail. I mean, I don't even get junk mail anymore. Like, it's amazing. Like, my mailbox is usually empty. And it is certainly the mail I do get is not real is not from realtors. It might be like a catalog or something. But that is about all I receive. But Janine, let's start before we get to mailing, I want to start at the beginning and sort of learn your story and how you uh, grew your business and how you came to be. So how did you get involved in real estate? All right. So here is my fabulous story. Um, I was born and raised in Germany, so I didn't grow up here. I didn't go to school here. And when I came over, I have an early childhood edu uh, education degree. So that was where I thought I was going to end up. And I started looking at daycares. I had a um, three-year-old 
at the time that I finished my degree, so I started looking at daycares. I interviewed thinking, well, at least I can bring him with and I can be with him. And after the first interview, I was mortified at the working environment. I was mortified at the pay. Um, mind you, I had to figure out how do I go back and visit my family as a first generation um, immigrant in so many words. And you can really not afford a you know flight ticket back home to Europe if you are on that kind of salary. So it posed a big like obstacle where I'm like, okay, I need to find something else. Um, my husband's uh, mother, so my mother-in-law has been in real estate and she was the nudge that said, why don't you give it a try? I started going to evening classes, knocked it out in like eight weeks, I believe. And um, got my real estate license. And that wow. And, into it. and so being an immigrant in, in the Chicagoland, we should also mention, I think I said this earlier, but Janine here is, is here in the Chicagoland area along with, with me. Um, but it's not the easiest, you know, yes, we have millions of people who live here. However, you're not from here. So your sphere of influence, I assume was almost nothing or very small, maybe limited to, was your husband from, I guess he's from Chicago, I guess. Well, so that was my, um, you know, little caveat there because my mother-in-law is still a licensed and active agent. My husband's referral business in so many words. Um, I wasn't even going to touch that because unless I wanted to have a really awkward Thanksgiving conversation was, Hey, you sold Aunt Judy's house. That was my deal. Right. I wasn't going to go there. So I'm like, okay, so there went that no family here. Didn't grow up here. No school. My kids were too little. So I didn't have any school, PTA, sports, all of that good stuff. I had nothing. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. So I started literally with zero. Um, wow. And I did open houses. So that was my start. I'm like, okay, let me figure out something. And, um, Open houses was where I got my feet wet in real estate, um, you know, leads per se. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It's something that we hear from literally almost every agent we've ever had on the show. And we've done over 515 episodes. Everyone says, I started doing open houses. And, and then, you know, people listening are like, well, what happens when you don't have a listing? You beg everyone in your office to allow you to do a listing. I'm guessing that's what you did. That's what I did in addition to rental leads. So our MLS does allow rentals. And because of that, I'm like every rental lead, I was like, me, me, right? I mean, my email folder, because it wasn't full with transaction, it was full with, hey, I have another rental lead for you, right? So. And we should also mention too, that Chicago is not known as a huge hub for Germans to immigrate to. We have like a large Greek population. We have a large Polish population. We have lots of uh, cultures that are here, but German, uh, there's, I, I mean, maybe there's a large German constituency here. I don't think so, but, um, but, but it's not like you could just go, oh, I'm just going to go sell to all the German people. I know I'm assuming that that wasn't as easy to do either. No, that wasn't on the um, on the table either. And we blend extremely well. So most often people need to listen to me for like a little while before they catch on to an accent. So, you know, it's one of those things where we, we blend in. I'm like, yeah. you can't even yeah. tell. I mean, and I get Polish a lot. People are like, oh, are you Polish? And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but well, the countries are very close, uh, close proximity. So yeah, so the accents are, are similar, but you're right. Yeah, you, you do blend in, especially here with the large Polish community um, that we have. So the bottom line is you had to start from zero and tell us how did you, so open houses were, were a key. Um, tell us more, like how, how did you really move forward? So the first year I tried everything that, you know, you see these Facebook posts of like, hey, I really have to get a deal in the next 30 to 60 days. What should I do? And you have 365 different answers and you try to do as many as possible. And that's what I did. Right. I tried the open houses. I looked at canceled listings. I looked at for sale by owners. But just what happens when you look at a little bit here, a little bit there. Right. You don't really get that traction. And my first year, um, I am not your average success story. I'm like my first year, I made $15,000, which is not terrible, but it's not terrible. You know, it's one five. So one five, that was it. And for a career that I thought like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be rookie of the year or something. Um, it was really eye opening that there was a lot of things involved um, to learn. And the main one was running a business. Again, yeah. I came from an employee mindset, right? You show up, 
you get paid for your hours, you go home. Um, so it was really a crash course of you could work 24 seven if you really wanted to. It's crazy. Yeah. And trying to figure out what's the, what are some of the best sort of strategies to, to build a business. And there are so many different strategies, like you said, and we were just talking about this with a friend the other day. She was saying, you know, my, she goes, I think my parents made a terrible mistake when I was a child and they put me in every sport and every activity. And I said, yeah, parents do that. I, I kind of, the same thing sort of happened to me. And I, and I didn't look at it as a negative. And she's like, it's very well-intentioned. Like it's a good, you know, it's, it's a lovely thing to do that for your children. But she goes, what it didn't do is it didn't get me to hyper-focus in one thing that I really, really enjoyed. And I could have really done something special in, you know, whatever, whatever she was, was talking about. And it was just a good reminder that like, oh yeah, when we, when we try when we do try to do everything, we end up not really specializing in anything. Yeah. So one of the things that, again, my first year was very similar. I tried so many different things. And now one of the resources that we have on our website, the hyper local agent is 35 plus free lead gen strategies. And the reason that, you know, there are so many different ones, the basics that everybody talks about, but hey, they're free. You can do them literally with zero dollars because that's where I started. But you have to find something that connects, right? Something where you're like, I can get up each and every morning and I can do something with that. And for me, that was geographic farming. That is where I decided I can be happy here. And what's great about geographic farming is it is focusing you into one. Well, obviously you can't farm everywhere. So you have to just by default choose a geographic area or uh, could be more of a demographic uh, farm, I guess. If you were like only going after doctors, you could buy a list of doctors and I guess you could mail to them. But geographic farming seems like it makes the most sense because, of course, it allows you to then really hone your your skills on the inventory and the needs of that community, right? You, you're going to learn over time where the best starter homes are for families moving maybe out of the city into the suburbs, where the best school districts are. You, This is just going to allow you to really build a brand around a particular geographic area. Is, is, that, is that fair to say? Right. So once I started to get hyper-focused on that being my you know, preferred way to get in front of buyers as well as seller leads, everything just became easier. Because it wasn't like I was, you know, I was like flailing around before trying all the things. And now it's like, okay, you had a focus. You're like, did it serve my purpose of becoming a better known name, a better known um, person people will refer and trust? Because the other part I had to overcome when I started, I was, um, I was in my early 20s. So I had to figure out, right, how do I make them feel like I have all, you know, the know-how that somebody in their 50s or 60s probably has, even though they might be licensed for two weeks as, you know, right. a third or fourth career versus right. somebody that decided to make this the career in the first place. So again, it's just things in my head probably that people will have a certain perception. So I, I don't think that's, like, yeah, I don't think that's in your head at all. I think that is a 100% absolutely logical sort of objection, right? Somebody goes, hey, we're going to buy an $800,000 home. Do we want to give it to the 22 year old, right? Like maybe not uh, only because not that the 22 year old couldn't be the greatest agent on the planet. They could be, but if we're playing the odds, maybe that would be a, a hurdle to, to overcome. I'm just curious before we move on, how did you address sort of your, your youth, your age in a way that was allowed people to still feel comfortable, you know, giving you those transactions? Knowledge. I mean, honestly, that's what it came down to. When you started having a conversation with me at the open house, it was a very um, detailed conversation, right? It's like asking the right questions. Well, tell me, like, what were you, you know, thinking for your ideal home? And it's, it's like, okay, like, what were you thinking in terms of down payment? What was more important? Ask those specific questions. And then you start also demonstrating and all of a sudden they were like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Um, that was interesting. Yeah, Did that, that, that makes sense. I, I'm curious too. 
You 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 were uh, your I think your net was going out a little bit, but you came through just fine. Your video was was frozen, which is no big deal. Um, I have a question though for any of our audience that hasn't yet chosen uh, to geographically farm. How or, or maybe a, here's a bet, maybe a different question. Let's say we picked you up and dropped you into a city where you didn't know anybody, which is basically what happened to you in in the Chicagoland area. But let's say we did it today and we moved you to another area, knowing everything you know now different city, you know nobody, and you now have to choose a new farm, what would you look for in picking a geographic farm? How would you make that determination of where? Okay. So my first farm, the one that, you know, I, I still farm to this date, I, I lived in. So being close to home was, you know, one of the first things. If I get dropped in the middle of a new place, I hope I'm going to have a house over my roof or, you know, a, a roof over my head. Um, and I would probably start there, right? Just because it's close to home. And one of the reasons that I did decide to farm was I didn't want to drive 30 minutes to a listing appointment. I didn't want to drive an hour for a showing, right? I'm like, call me, call me crazy. But I'm like, my time is not really well spent getting to and from appointments. One of the reasons being I have to hire a babysitter to kind of make sure my kids don't have to tag along, right? And I have this rule. I'm like, kids do not belong in listing appointments. They have come to open houses. They have come to buyer um, appointments. They have come to, you know, um, office events. They, they're they pretty much there half the time, all the time, but not listing appointments and not brand new clients. Like that's my... That's sure. My- of course. Um, but I, I want to make, make a quick point too, because also choosing an area... That hope that that you live in is also beneficial because you get to say to everybody, by the way, I live down the street or I live just, you know, a few blocks over. This is this is my area. This is where I live. This is what I know. There's something powerful in that versus, oh, where do you live? Oh, I live in the city 30 minutes away or I live, you know, in another suburb, Um, which, again, all of that is fine. Maybe maybe not everyone lives in an area that they want to geographically farm. But if you do, boy, that's a powerful thing to say to somebody. It's like, oh, by the way, this is where I choose to be here. And this is why I want to work with eight people in this area. Yeah. So one of the biggest things on that one is my home value is directly tied to the listings that I get, right? If I give away the listings in so many words, it's not going to do my own house any good. Um, now, if I want to fight for the best you know, possible price that they can get, it'll benefit my my own home as well, right? Oh, that is a very, is, hold on a second. Oh, we're going to stop. We're going to pause that. That is okay. brilliant. You just said something really, really, really smart. Um, and kind of, it's kind of a cute thing too to say. It sort of almost has a little bit of a humor to it. But <laughs> boy, that is, I, I just don't, I want to s- slow that one down just a little bit because that is something nobody has ever said on the show. So Janine just basically said, she also gets to say, you know, if it comes up, she can say, hey, by the way, by me getting you the very best price on your home, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that's actually going to help everyone in the community, including me, because I'm in your community. So I am incentivized, not just for my commission, but I, at some point, I'm going to leave and I want to sell my home and I want to make as much money as possible too. Obviously, she's not going to say it quite like that, but you get the point. That's a very, very good point. Love that. It doesn't, you know, I mean, you will not find a harder working agent for that reason alone inside your hyper local area. Now, if you live there, now you might say, okay, well, I don't live there and I don't, you know, I can't use that one. That's true. However, if those are your stamping grounds, you then have to face the next seller that you sit down with and say, well, what did you do over at Mary's house? Because you gave it away, right? You will not do that. You will say, I thought the best I could for Mary's house. So I can sit here today with you. And I feel really confident to tell you I did a super amazing job over there. And I'll do the same here because for me, it's my reputation. And right. for that part, right? It, it's an easy one. And how big is your farm? Meaning, is it a certain number of households? Is it just a, a particular area? Like, how, how do you think about that? Okay, I'll take you back through my farming um, journey, because when I tell you my number right now, it is over 5,600 homes. So mm-hmm. that's a lot. Um, that's not where I started. I started out with 100 printed flyers. And 100 printed flyers, I decided to invite them to a neighborhood garage sale. Out of that 100 flyers, after two years, I finally decided there has to be a better way. And I graduated into um, my first mailing route. So I use a service called Every Door Direct Mail through the United States Postal Service um, when I started. And that's where I graduated um, to my first route, I want to say in 2017. 
It was 400 houses. I felt so proud of me that I can like, you just push a button and there's like postcards going out. Right. And I was literally heading to the playground and the mailman working his nine to five would deliver it. So I could still be at the park and I could still do the mom things that I do. Sure. And things were happening. Like I had leads coming into, you know, my email inbox as I was pushing them on the swing. So I'm like, I need to do more of that. So one route led to a second one, a second to a third, a third to a fourth. I believe I'm at 12 or more at this point. Wow. So it goes quick. Yeah. So when you first were doing the flyers, were you hand delivering them? Were you putting them on people's doorsteps? That kind of thing? Uh, yeah. So I, um, I'm not a door knocker. So I will you know, try my best not to encounter people. <laughs> I'm an introvert by nature. So just, you know, striking up a conversation with strangers um, might be also partially a cultural thing. Everybody here is into the small talk about the weather, especially in Chicago. And um, having, you know, somebody in the elevator tell me, hey, yeah, nice weather today, right? Um, I was just like, what's happening, right? <laughs> uh, you get used to those little cultural quirks. And, you know, now I talk about the weather just like anybody else in Chicago. But it's one of those things where I just made flyers. Um, I put them in door hanger bags. I took my kit, put my kit in the stroller, and I just hung it on Walked their door, the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. And took a walk. Like, that's what I did. So when you were doing 100, let's just talk about uh, how long it takes to actually start to make an impact and get results because we know that one mailer is basically no mailer, right? If you just do one, you might as well don't do anything because the odds of you getting a success there are obviously very low. But over time and with consistency, those numbers increase. So when you were doing 100 flyers, you know how long did it take before you started getting any reach outs? Yeah. So that first flyer I did was actually an event invitation. I said, right. hey, I would love to do um, a neighborhood garage sale. So I would like to coordinate a date. I would be um, helping with advertisement. And if this date works for you, go ahead and send me an email that you're in. And then I'll just send you the details. And that flyer, 100 flyers out, I did get 10 responses back. Wow. That's Pretty incredible. Good, right? So wait, you, you were offering, I want to make sure I understand. So you're offering to promote someone's garage sale, but you don't know that they even want to do a garage sale. You're just saying, Hey, if you're thinking about a garage sale, I'm going to help you. Is that basically it? That's basically it. And I mean, remember I'm in the suburbs, right? So people love to have things to do sure. right in front of their own door. And, um, that event for me, so garage sales for me was always like, fun to look through other people's right junk and yeah. like I, I love it it's like one of those things when again sure. you find something that you love it makes sense so I'm like okay rather than now going from like you know different different houses uh, all over the area why can't I have a garage sale in my own neighborhood where I can literally just go from house to house to house to house and have it my way right so that's what we did so how would you help them with their with their with their uh, garage sale okay so the garage sale itself was um, obviously for me, if you think about garage sales, why do people have garage sales? Um, obviously the first one is right too much stuff or kids have outgrown things, but then you also have the people saying like, well, we're actually getting ready to downsize. Right. So the first one was like, Ooh, that's brilliant. I never, th Oh my God. You I never have never thought about that. I have ne Well, I look I, as a not look I, when people, <laughs> when people ask me, when people, I don't, I, I say I'm in marketing when people ask me because the moment they ask, uh, when I tell them I'm in real estate, they're like, oh, how's the market? I'm like, no, I don't practice real estate. So I am always the, la the last one to the, to, the, uh, to the party. What you just said is so brilliant. And I have, I, and by the way, I don't think anyone said this on the show ever before. So this, this is something that I imagine a lot of our audience, yeah, guys, people have garage sales might be moving. Brilliant. <laughs> well, you're welcome. So thank you. <laughs> it goes back to mentality, right? I mean, it goes back to know your audience, know your who. And when you look at our um, baby boomers, right? When you look at the people that are currently selling based on NAR stats or whatever you you know report you look at, these are the people that have the equity. These are the people whose houses are paid off. Those are also the people that come from a generation of war. It's like it was really hard to accumulate the things right. that they have. Donating the things that they paid, like the dining room sets, thousands of thousands of dollars for, and you just now give it away, that doesn't make any sense, right? right? So it goes back to understand who you are serving. 
So for me, it was like, okay, if I can have somebody come to their house to the driveway and then give them even a little bit of money for that dining room set that nobody else wants anymore anyhow, right? They're happy. They see me drive traffic in terms of marketing. They understand that's what I do for a living and I get hired. So you would basically say, I will help try to drive traffic to your um, to your to your garage sale. Maybe you provide some signage, things like that. Um, how would you actually market? How would you sort of uh, attract people to go to the to go to the so open that one? Or, sorry, is, I keep saying open houses, the garage sale. Right, but that one evolved, right? So, um, but same principle for the open houses. The marketing principles behind it are all the same. You find the person that you think will be aligned with what you have to offer. Might that be a garage sale? Might that be an open house? Might that be a listing? Right? You find the person, you find what they need, you find the right messaging, and then you just bring them in. So in this case, it was a very simple one for, hey, you love garage sales. Not only do I have one, I have a you know neighborhood garage sale to promote where you can just hit 10 houses, in a matter of uh, a day and you don't have to drive all over the place. So it eliminates right. that time constraint, right? And you bring them in. So for the open houses, same scenario, you have an open house. You're like, hey, if you're looking to get into the open house, you don't want to wait for an agent to schedule a showing. Perfect opportunity. We have an open house on Saturday, right? Come on by. And then same for the listing. I'm sure you're tired of seeing all the crappy listings on the market. Good for you. I have the perfect one. It's you know hitting the market tomorrow. If you want the details, let me know. Find the right audience, find the right message, and get it done. And right? you know, I, 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 my marketing wheels are spinning because I was now thinking basically what you're doing is going into a neighborhood and saying, I'm going to organize a neighborhood uh, garage sale. And whoever wants to participate can participate. I'm going to leave a flyer on every. Is, is that my understanding? Is you basically come and saying, hey, I want to do one for the entire neighborhood or get as many people as possible because there's strength in that that'll help everyone. Oh my gosh, this is, I love this. Every By the way, we're going to pause, go get this book because this is what she literally wrote a book about, Success with Real Estate Mailers. It's on Amazon. It's got great reviews. Um, please go. There's a link to that in our show notes. I'm sorry, Jeannie, continue. You're good. You're good. So let's break it, I guess, down for the mailers because they might be like, okay, we're talking a garage sale and now we're going back to a book. Like, where's the connection? So I'll break down the connection for you guys. When it comes to mailers, you have three calls to actions, right? And I kind of have them described as a stoplight. So if you think about red, um, orange, or yellow, whichever color you want to have there, and green. Um, red is the hardest call to action you can have, which is come schedule an appointment. Yet every single agent puts on their mailer something along the lines of, Call today for your free consultation. Right. Well, and who does that? Nobody calls. Nobody calls. I don't want to call and I don't want a consultation, right? It's right. as good as like a timeshare. I'm like, no, I don't want to sit through a free breakfast so I can be sold a timeshare. I don't exactly. want it. Exactly. So, but it's hard, right? It's hard to get an appointment booked from a mailer, a piece of paper. So the second step, and that's the one I use for the garage sale strategy, is registrations. It is not quite as difficult to get people to say, hey, I'll register for that. Because if something changes, they can just say, hey, something happened, right. I'm going to have to back out. Okay, no problem, right? We have that happen with our sellers sometimes. We're like, sure. we schedule a listing appointment and then we get a message of like, hey, I forgot about this appointment or hey, can we, you know, again, that's okay. They registered and now I can continue on with my follow-up, right? And then the easiest way by far when it comes to postcards is simply, hey, I already go, uh, went ahead and pulled you a free home value report and you can get it right over here. And we just drive them to a website to offer them a free home evaluation at the push of a button, right? Three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock uh, at night. It doesn't matter. They can get it. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. Um, I, I'm with you on the red the red light part about call for a free consultation. That just doesn't appeal to most people. Um, the other two options seem much, much, much stronger. Um, but I love the idea of say, hey, just get a free home evaluation, but doing it via postcard as opposed to where most people will do those is via email. And that's okay too. Um, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit easier to ignore on email, I believe. And that that's my my guess because we all just get flooded with emails. We don't really get flooded with mailers anymore. It just doesn't happen. And 
I was going to ask you why you chose postcards over, uh, you know, envelope uh, types of mailers, but I'm guessing it's because it's one less step and it's cheaper. Well, I actually do both. So um, postcards was just, you know, what everybody ended up knowing me for, but it's really the, the uh, print marketing behind it. Right. So we do have micro farms. We work for, um, you know, people that have been in the house for 15 years or more. Like some of them will get a note card. Um, we do a color, like a color coded system so we can like batch create them. And then it's just like, OK, we just send it out based on color. So it's really simple to keep track of a lot of the things. Um, postcards, they are just simply the easy button of you know, somebody like we have a local printer and we do recommend everybody typically does go with a local printer when it comes to EDDM mailings um, because it will cut down on, on shipping costs. And the local printer oftentimes can also drop off directly to the designated mailing office that it needs to go to. So local printers have always been my recommendation for agents to utilize on that. And it's like it's just easy, right? You just design the front, the back. Um, you send it off to print and then from there it gets delivered. It doesn't have that extra step, like you said. And so, but you do both. So let's talk about the envelope mailers as well. So you started with postcards and, and now you're doing both. What do you do for the uh, open me, you know, kind of uh, uh, mailers? The open me. Okay. So that one is more of my follow-up. Um, when somebody asks for a home evaluation, right, there has to be a follow-up. And the cool thing is with a geographic farm, I really don't have to worry about too much about what do I do next? Because as I'm concentrated in my geographic farm, I'm always gonna have something going on, right? There's gonna be either an event, maybe there's gonna be another sure. mailer, like there's always a follow-up that is already taking off the hassle of what now, what's the next step, right? Because they get a lead, people get a lead, a seller lead, and they're like, I got a seller lead, now what? Right. And it's like, and even if I was to drop the ball on the follow up, I know something else is in place, which is fantastic. Um, so a little peace of mind there. But the envelopes, for example, we use them for a follow up every single month after you say, hey, I want to know what my house is worth. Chances are you're not going to list with us that day sure. or that week and probably not that month. Sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. We've had people in our follow up for two years. And again, if I just sent them one envelope a month at, you know, 66 sets right now for a stamp, um, again, I was in an office where I can print and um, the envelope cost me about 11 cents, I think. So my follow up to that person, 77 cents. And again, for me to get my name out, to make sure I get a listing, I do track it. Um, I don't have my numbers for this year. I can give you 2021. I was looking at a 10x ROI. So based on, I sent 60,000 mailers. Um, I want to say it cost me about 24 grand um, in 2021, 2022. Um, so each individual year and well over $240,000 in commission received. So one to 10 um, as a return, I'll take it. I keep mailing. Do you know, I have lived at, so I'm in a new development. And I, I tell this story all the time, so I apologize to the audience if they've heard me say this a million times, but I, I'm going to keep saying it because it is exactly what you're talking about. So I'm in a new development. And when I say new, it was built three years ago. And I was one of the one of the first people to move in. We've got 40 some units. Um, not one, not one mailer have I received in that three years. Now, you could make the argument, well, yeah, you just moved into a new development. You're not moving. You don't know that. And... Several people have moved, believe it or not. Two, at least two couples have, and these are not my resident, but but some of them are million plus dollar listings. Um, and two of two of those people have actually moved in within those three years. And not there's 46,000 realtors in the Chicagoland area. Not one of them has sent me a mailer. It's crazy. Uh, well, I mean, it's really not that crazy because everybody is so focused on the social media, right? And it's like, one of the things that I tell people, it's like, okay, you have two choices to make. You can continue to go where everybody else is going, right? Because it's it's a loud container. If you want to be noticed online, either you're going to do something really, really crazy. We all see in the listing agent standing butt naked in front of their listing, going viral and then getting kicked out of the brokerage, right? We've all seen that one. Um, but either you do something really crazy or you go somewhere else where it's not that hard to get attention. 
right? Because it's either you're going to do more or you're just going to do it a little bit smarter. So. Yeah. And what's funny is, you know, 30 years ago, mailers, what was everybody was doing and they've moved away from it to go into social because technology has pushed us all in that direction. Yet you're right. The, that is a much, you have to scream pretty loud in social to make any sort of impact, or you're going to be just creating content constantly, just constant content. And boy, that, that can be, I mean, for a working mom, that's difficult. Um, so yeah, you're a single person in, in your twenties. Yeah. You can make content all day. You can probably do that. But for, for, and I, I'll, I'll tell you, every postcard I ever receive, I at least look at before I throw it away. I don't always open every envelope, especially if I know it's junk mail, like, oh, this is my credit card company pretending that it's not my credit card company. You know, one of those those things where it's like urgent open and you're like, I know this is, a, this is not an urgent open situation. So I toss it. I don't open everything, but I look at everything that's a postcard. So that's also a really, really great point. And it's also the most inexpensive way uh, for people that are thinking, oh, mailers are expensive. Well, are they? I mean, if you're getting a 10x return, um, I'd, uh, I'd like to get a 10 X return on any investment I ever make. So, I mean, that's an incredible return. So yes, this is awesome. So tell us, let's get to the specifics. How often are you mailing? You talked about the follow-ups at least once a month. Um, is there, is there more to it or is, is it the same message every month, by the way? No, I mean, the message itself depends on what's going on too, right? I mean, especially like COVID is a ex uh, prime example. There was a lot going on during that time frame. Our messaging is really, you know, depending on what is happening, like the interest rate being the, what the interest rate are, right? I mean, that becomes a message. Message is really uh, dictated by market happenings and where your prospect is, your ideal person. So if you are focused on families, for example, and you're going back to school, like you're going to have a lot of other things on your plate than if you are a retired person looking to downsize. So it goes back to know your ideal person, right? So if you are looking at, okay, what is it that that I do? Um, first up, I do not believe that uh, like you don't have to mail monthly. Like, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, I do have a big thing where I think you really have to think about who's telling you you have to mail monthly. And the people who have the, the mailing stores tell exactly. you. Exactly. These people will sell you on a 12 months contract because then they don't have to worry about getting another customer for the next 12 months because they just have right. one. It's like you have to mail at least 12 months in order to see a return. Now, I'll give you the story for my brand new farm. So I recently expanded into a brand new area. I walked out of it with a listing within the first 30 days. Now, do I have to mail monthly? No. So I personally mail about roughly eight times a year. Okay. So with the Chicago market, we do have a little bit of seasons going on. So I have more activity, more signs on the ground in the summer. So you will typically see me mail more towards like the later part of the year over the winter when nobody wants to set foot outside um, into the spring market. Because it's not my decision to say, you know, real estate sells year round. It's matters what the consumer thinks and if the consumer thinks super bowl sunday is the day the spring market kicks off i just have to come to terms with that 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 is their thinking right me trying to explain to them that they're wrong is going to take much more effort than me just saying okay fine you're right but we should start in october to talk because otherwise you have missed the prep time and your beautiful spring pictures of your beautiful yard because again i'm in the suburbs we put a lot of pride into our you know curb appeal in our yards and you can't see them in february when it's all snow covered and blah and all the leaves are gone so it's one of those things where you just want to make sure that you really understand your market which again every agent i'm sure knows their market that they're in right and then you just act accordingly so between the eight mailers and one event initially I have since branched out and added a couple other events for December right now, for example, we are doing letters to Santa for the community. And it's just, again, you make a child smile and that goes back to my early childhood degree. So again, I'm, you know, I take more to the kids sometimes than the parents. Um, but when you have, you know, little campaigns like that, that make the children happy and they help the parents take something off their plate your name just comes along with the goodwill that you're demonstrating for the community and that alone and, and it needs to be genuine and in, in my case it is very very genuine it needs to be genuine you can't just do it for the money right 
um, I could get nothing out of it and I'd still be happy that I've done something nice for the community that I live in. Yeah, I, I want only because I don't have children. I just, and this is my ignorance, uh, probably people will laugh at me. What is the letters to Santa thing? Explain that to me. Um, so when I look at um, the letter to Santa, right? It's like every kid writes a letter to Santa and we have put up a mailbox inside the community and we tell our parents, drop, drop off the letter off. to Santa. Got it. Right? Make sure you scan our QR code because in that QR code, we're going to lead them to a Google form. And we just say, hey, we want to make sure your letter doesn't get lost to the North Pole. So let me know your name um, or your, your children's names. Let me know where the response letter is getting mailed to. And um, this year, we added actually a certificate. It's like, do you want a nice lift certificate? Or do you want a warning letter of like, come on, little Johnny, <laughs> turn, our, you know, turn the behavior oh, around. Oh, I love that. Um, so that's what we added this year and they just fill out the form. Okay. So we get their email, we get their, we get their address. They subscribe themselves to our email list with that. And we just send out a letter and um, continue growing our, you know, hyper local. So wait, I just want to put a, I just got to figure, get to the end of this. So the letter goes out and it says it's to the child back from Santa saying, Hey, we got your letter. Like, what does it say in there other than that? Uh, yeah. It says like, Hey, thanks so much for your letter. Um, you know, me and Mrs. Claus are really excited um, to come down and, you know, visit your house soon. Rudolph is excited. I know you're probably going to leave me a cookie, something along those lines. And um, if we have a parent adding something in the special notes fields, like, oh, hey, can you it. mention, like, he's been really good with his new baby, you know, baby sister. We squeeze that one in there. We customize it a little bit um, for them. And then we'll send it up in the mail. And um, they love it. They love it. I, you know, I was just thinking as a child, I wrote a, a lot of letters to Santa because that's what you do. And I never got one back. So that is awesome. I, I didn't even know that was an option. So I am, uh, I am, I'm being educated, but guys think of how exciting this would be for a child to get a letter back. Um, and probably unless, unless I would just, my parents just didn't know about these things. Uh, I never got one. So I imagine a lot of people didn't. So you're right. Even, even if it doesn't, uh, translate into a deal, it almost certainly will at some point because you're doing something that is very, very special for that family. And yeah. it's not expensive. It's really pretty inexpensive. Yeah. I mean, the the letters to Santa, last year we wrote just over a hundred. So, you know, I'm looking at $66 that I spent in postage. Um, again, this was not an expensive campaign, but it had a huge impact of just having somebody really feel grateful for having you there as a community expert, as a hyper-local agent of choice. And then again, if they have friends looking to move into the neighborhood, if they are having parents that need to sell, right, that is that part of Goodwill where we're like, hey, you should talk to Janine, right? And you should have a conversation or you should at least interview her. I know you have your best friend who's an agent, but at least maybe interview her, right? It gets our name out there with them. And um, again, it's, it's easy to do because I don't have to worry about when do I do my follow-up I could do my letters to Santa and just get them out at 11 o'clock at night. Like I can do the activity itself regardless of, you know, the working hours per se. Again, when you go back to being a mom, um, you know, I know we tried to schedule this episode and I'm like, well, I, I'm driving my kid. 12 o'clock comes along. I'm like, my kid's going to school and I'm the designated driver. Right? Then three o'clock rolls around. I'm like, all of a sudden there's pickup again. And it's like, my day is spent in the car a lot and i know i'm not the only one which is why postcards and envelopes and mailers have been so forgiving um just this week i put a post up and it was all about my calendar mailers and i said what other lead generation activity lets you do this at you know 11 o'clock at night in your rubber ducky bathrobe um and get the real estate leads out of it like there's not many other lead gen and you can do it during normal business hours of course right but it's like, it's the flexibility that it allows, you know, us as parents who want it all, because I know I'm not alone when I say I want to have a really good career. Um, I also want to be there when it comes time to pick up my kids from school, to make breakfast, to be there for dinner, right? And so it's like trying to fit all of this into a 24 hour period is sometimes a little rough, but this is why postcards and mailers, um, emails have really afforded me that lifestyle that I know other agents can have to. 
which versus doing things on social, which really requires more attention, more energy, more time, because social media is really best done in as a two-way communication, right? You might post something, someone writes you back, you're going to want to continue to engage with them so that, of course, you build a relationship from there. But postcards are really a one-way and that frees up your time uh, to continue to do mom activities, work on other parts of your business. And you're not constantly, you know, 24 seven checking your Instagram and Facebook. Did I reply to every comment? Did I, did I, it's, it's a lot of work. Well, it's that. And it's like, every time I have like this content creation worthy moment where I'm like, Oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta get it on camera. I'm like, my kid sits there and he was like, you know, talking to grandpa on the phone, on my phone. So it's like my phone is occupied because he needed to FaceTime his papa or, sure. you know, he was just uh, because I'm still working at like or trying to work and do something at four o'clock. I'm like, hey, here, watch a YouTube episode. Right. Or we're we're out running errands and he's got my phone. I'm like, I can't even report what I'm doing because my phone is occupied. Um, I'm a little guy. So um, there's a struggle there. <laughs> Oh, a quick question about when you identified your farm, then you had to collect the data of, of that community. Um, did you, do, are there certain services you recommend to pay for that? Or how do you recommend sort of collecting uh, all the neighborhood information? Um, you have MLS access, right? So you know what's happening uh, in your areas. You have tax record access. So for those listeners that do not have anything like that, obviously there is the title companies. There's really no need to pay for a service giving you data. Um, and I'll, I'll give you the example for my email list. I do not purchase an email list for my neighborhood. I compare it to when we as real estate agents get messages, hey, I have a new healthcare quote for you. Do you want it? I am very annoyed with it. If I personally do not like it, why would I want to do that to somebody else? And I don't care if it's an SMS, if it's an email, if I do not seek out the information from you and you just decide to buy a list from somebody and then start spamming me, you're going to put a certain taste in my mouth that I personally don't like. It is a little bit more effort to collect the emails on your own through open houses, through the uh, letter to Santa campaign, but your open rates will be better. Your click rates will be better. Um, and with that, again, it's not about, you know, those vanity metrics of I have 3000 people on my list. It's like you could have 300 people on your list and be extremely profitable, more so profitable if these people actually want to hear from you. So it goes back to vanity metrics on social media. It's the same for geographic farming, right? Don't get spooked up on those. So you, so you wouldn't purchase a list of a geographic farm and just start mailing out you all. Well, so purchase a list of emails and phone numbers. Okay. So, so I know you don't do that. So you're only uh, directly uh, digitally marketing to people that you've had a, some sort of connection Correct. with you've met them now for mailers. You do, you would buy a list of, of that area. So for mailers, the EDDM um, is a service available the united states postal service right so that part is readily available there's no need to um you know have any secret connection it just you can you can do it as an individual agent and that part alone has helped me uh, now if i go and find individual addresses and say hey i only want to look at people who've lived in the house for 15 years and i want to send them something a little bit more specific that states hey after having lived in your house for such a long time you know sometimes the thought about moving comes up i just want you to know that i am here whenever you're ready if you're not ready to move that's fine you live in a perfectly amazing neighborhood you and i both know that um you know wishing you a merry christmas happy holidays whatever it is but if i look at like these types of marketing campaigns we have tax record access or title company depending on you know where you're listening from, we really don't need to pay anybody anything to get that data. And then it's just a matter of yeah, that's a fair... equity, right? And sweat equity. Which one do you want to put in? Do you want to pay a service to get it done? Or do you want to stuff the envelope themselves um, and put in sweat equity? So. Yeah, it's a good question. And I, you just brought up a really strong point for anyone listening who's like, how do I get access to this kind of information? Reach out to lenders, reach out to title companies, 
attorneys. Um, between those three resources, somebody will be able to get you the data that you want. And title companies, uh, attorneys, um, and uh, lenders all want your business. So they want you to be successful. So yes, leverage your relationships with the other professionals. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously then there are other ways. And right now we're exploring a CRM that will have an integrated postcard, you know, service with it. And I tried it um, so far, loving everything about it. So, you know, I'm in the middle of, of getting all of this built out. It is really, really powerful when you are starting to have QR codes and then you add those to your mailing pieces. And um, I was sharing that in one of my groups yesterday, I send out a mailing to 90 or oh no, 75 homes roughly. And um, I had a QR code on there that was trackable per house, per address. So far I got two scans back and it states the name of the person. It states the address of the person the campaign it came from. So these are now leads that I can follow up on based on a QR code scan, right? So super powerful. Direct mail has evolved so, so much. And um, it's not just paper anymore. It is smart paper. And um, people need to see where the gaps are for the attention and then go after that one. Don't go down the mainstream of AI, right? I mean, yes, I use AI to a certain degree in my business, it is not to create 365 pieces of content for the week, right? It is, it's, this is what everybody's trying to do more and more and more. Don't go where everybody is going, go the other way. Yeah. And, and go where people will have enough attention to see your message. Social media, you're fighting, you're fighting a lot of different people for that attention. Mail, you're not fighting that many people. And you know you're fighting a couple of catalog companies and, and a few credit card companies. That's about it. Um, I mean, I don't even get. I don't even think my bank sends. And I don't even think my bank sends me statements. They have it for years, you know, in the mail. So I literally get almost no mail. So I am. I get excited when I get a postcard. Um, or, or gosh, a handwritten note. I'd probably fall over. Some. Uh, I, I get just a couple of those a year too. That's another amazing thing. Now that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do it. But boy, you want really great return. You know. Uh, but if you're getting a 10x on, you know, doing it auto, through an automated system, that's a pretty pretty strong. That now for people that you don't yet know that you're sending stuff out to, you haven't yet met them. How are because I know the people that you have uh, that are in your lead list are getting about eight mailers a, a year. What about the people who aren't yet, who haven't yet raised their hand, but you've you've put them in into your you know into your mailing? Yeah. Actually, it's the reverse way. So people that I have not, you know, people in my farm, all of them, about eight mailings a year. People that have raised their hand, they do go, go on a monthly. Got it. So they get more. Yeah. Got it. They get a little bit of I love it. So, you know, they raised their hand, they took the next step. So now it's up to me to take my next step. And um, and that again builds that relationship, right? They are watching from the sideline. They might have seen my sign. Um, they might just watch and see you. Well, is she actually able to do it? Is she actually gonna sell it? And it's like, oh, there's a sold writer. She did it. You know what? The sign came down. You know what? It's time for her to come over to my house and um have a conversation. People need to form trust. Absolutely. And and now with QR codes, like you were saying on the mailers, everything can be tracked. You might think, well, we don't really know what the return or the, the return on investment necessarily. It's kind of hard. How many people even, you know, check this out? Well, now with QR codes, everything's trackable. Yeah. So that's just to say, so uh, I know we're gonna have a recording on there. So I guess sometimes the video people get a little bit of an extra one. So this one here is just, um, you know, I'm holding up a screenshot right now showing what the QR code messages look like. Um, so if you have that video, you know, you can see it. It yeah. says the name, just like I described it. It has the name, it has the, the address in itself. You get real-time notified. Real-time notification. And the interesting part is these people did not complete our opt-in form. So all they did right. was they scanned and then they stopped. Yeah. They're like, oh, I have to enter my information. I'm not going to do that. That's okay. You don't have to anymore. I'm already there. <laughs> so I already know. So, so does each person have its own, their own unique QR code or is it just what? Oh, yeah, I we're see. We're getting fancy for 2024. So I'm really. Excited. That is um, fancy. It's, it's starting to, you know, take shape again. That's part of what we've been working on at the hyperlocal agent to make it more 
affordable and accessible for real estate agents who are not mega teams, who do not have a marketing budget that is bazillions of dollars. And it's like putting data back in front of the agent that, you know, should have it and not the companies withholding that information. That's our little thing we're working on. I love it. And Janine has all sorts of courses that you should check out at the, at, um, j- sorry. At the hyper I've got asked so many questions um, over the years since I started sharing what I'm doing. Everyone's like, how do you do this? And um, every now and then there's a course that comes out for it. My calendars, for example, my garage sale is on there because people ask, what do you do? Or how do you do it? Um, there is a process because I actually, I don't, you could have seen me on TV with the garage sale. I had Fox 32 News report on my garage sale about two years ago because um, we had 180 sellers and it was wild and the streets were packed and it was crowded and um, it was amazing. So, Yeah, I love that. And so, guys, I think this is a great, really a great place to wrap up because I really want, I think we've made the case mailers work. In 2023, 2024, uh, we anticipate being just as successful with these because why shouldn't they be? And no one's doing it. So let's start doing it. And it's and it's not as expensive as it sounds. And yeah, you may need to give it a couple of years. You may need to think, hey, I'm going to be doing this for a couple of years. Yay. And and you know what? Faster. faster. Well, Janine says no. <laughs> Janine says no. Janine says it's you're gonna get you're gonna get results faster than that. But I am telling you, even even if you just keep doing it. You will, you will get absolutely results because you're going to follow Janine's method. And you're going to do that because you're going to pick up her book, which is Success with Real Estate Mailers on Amazon, or you're going to, and, or you're going to also check out all the different courses. She has some really cool ones. Like, what if I want to do a fun comic, like comic book style mailer? She has a course on that. Like, that's cool, right? That's fun. Um, she has some a bunch of free stuff as well for different lead gen ideas, how to do garage sales, um, how to do, um, you know, all sorts of geographic farming, quarterly newsletters, uh, green screen course, how to actually use green screens for, for video stuff. And anyway, she, she's got really, really cool stuff. She has even Monopoly uh, style mailers. You can have really a lot of fun. So she's got a lot of it's for free and some of it uh, costs money, but it's all worth your time and your resources. So if you go to the hyperlocalagent.com, you'll see all of her different courses. And again, the book is Success with Real Estate Mailers, uh, which is available anywhere books are sold. It's certainly on online as well. And Amazon will have a link to that. Um, now, and I also want to say for anyone listening who is like, this sounds pretty cool, but maybe I could partner with Janine and maybe um, I'm a local Chicago agent and I kind of want to do what Janine's doing and maybe I'd be a good fit for her team. So if you are somebody that wants to geographically farm and maybe want to partner with Janine in a partic- in, in any way that makes sense, um, you can reach out to her. Um, also, if you're an agent who has, maybe you don't live in Chicago, of course, most of our, most of our listeners don't, and you want a good agent to refer business to if any of your, their clients are moving to the suburban area, Janine would love the opportunity to develop a referral relationship with you. And of course, she has people, you know, here in in Chicago, guys, as as people get older, they go south. A lot of them leave and they go to Florida and Arizona and Texas and lots of places where it's a lot warmer. So she has referrals that she needs to start sending out as well. So wouldn't be the worst idea to reach out to her and uh, maybe put her on your mailing list and start mailing her. Every, I mean, honestly, it's not the worst idea. Um, it is not. Really, like, because Janine's going to get, honestly, about 50 people who reach out to her after this, uh, after we publish this episode. So stand, stand apart. Um, but, the, you know, whether or not you reach out to Janine and partner with her or just we'll read her book or go to one of her courses, she's the real deal. Um, I, I think she's proven that in this conversation. She's super no nonsense. Here's exactly what to do. And it works. Um, in fact, Janine, I want to invest uh, with you and I want to give you all my money because I want a 10x return. So um, I may just uh, deposit money into your bank account and you could do the you could do the heavy lifting. I'll teach you how to because you are in charge of your business, right? This is the oh, darn it. I got to do it myself. You can hire an assistant but- and you can train the assistant. It'll be the best asset in your business, promise. And you're absolutely right. With a 10x return, you can hire an assistant. You can have somebody basically stuffing envelopes, doing some of the heavy lifting, or just designing it or whatever. When you're getting that kind of return, 
it really frees up even more of your time because you can then delegate. So that's the biggest part. You don't have to and scale. Of yeah. it. You can just increase the quantity, increase the money, and it scales beyond anything else. You don't have to hire additional ISAs. You don't have to do anything else other than scale up, which is really fun. Janine. I'm gonna. I want to ask you one last question because I recruit realtors for my company and this is just such great timing because we have planned our 2024. How are we going to recruit agents? And yes, of course, we're going to email everyone. You have to, you know, of course, we're going to be sending a monthly email with a cute little whatever, but our main focus is not email and it's not social media. It is mailers. Yes. Funny enough. Now I want to ask, here's my question to you. How many recruiting emails do you get from other brokerages? Because look, the reason I'm asking, telling this, and I want you, everyone, to, to stay tuned while I'm, I'm, while Janine's answering, because everyone's, you know, right now people are exploring other brokerages, or they're thinking of creating a team, or they already have a team and they want to grow their team. So recruiting is going on outside of people like me who recruit for a brokerage. You might just be wanting to start a team or, or build your team even further. So you probably get a lot of recruiting emails. I'm guessing. So the recruiting is one of those things where, you know, I like to look and see how I feel after I got a recruiting. Um, I'm not a feely person, but it's like, it's interesting because we will feel first before our, our brain kicks in and analyzes. It, right. Yeah. So I always see like, how do I feel about it? And, um, I do have like a lot of them actually come in via SMS. So they are paying services. Um, I will say the SMS are mediocre at best, so they are getting deleted right away. There's people that I actually know, um, since I am a trainer, there's also, like I said, a, a lot of people that I have relationships with and that I'm now on a list. So I feel like it's very impersonal. Um, so, you know, the, the SMS not connecting. Um, and by the way, nobody really wants to get an SMS from somebody they don't know. It's like we a just health don't insurance thing, you know. It's like, hey, can I give you a health insurance? No, you cannot. Um, it's yeah. very impersonal. It's you know, I didn't ask for that, so it's you know. So, so, so we, email, we know you get a lot of many, yeah. Go ahead, email. right? Too many emails. Too many. Um, it is just of course in the emails the way they are presented. The more polished an email looks, um, the the faster it goes in the in the spam folder, right? So right. the emails I send are more like newsletter, or not newsletter, more like journal in entries, right? It's like a little life update. I'm like bringing people into my story. So they are different, which is also why my open rate on my emails is typically about 50 to 60%. And it's wow. one of those things where you really just think things through. Like, how do you feel about it? What do you want the person to feel, right? And when you look at recruiting from a piece of mail, it's going to stick around longer. Make sure you have a really good call to action, not just sign up with my brokerage today, right? Yeah, because no one does that either. And, but how many mailer rec recruiting mailers do you receive as an agent per year? Zero. She just showed zero, guys. Zero. So this is my point. Nobody is doing this, whether you're trying to find for your own business and find clients or you're a guy like me who needs to recruit for your team or your brokerage. This is the, the the missed opportunity. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, although not really. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, it actually isn't because I pay for uh, email services. I pay for people to help with content. Um, it, it, all of this costs money. It's really probably not that much different from mailing. It's not. And your attention is going to be much more focused on it. Well... Guys, everyone should be mailing in 2024. Janine Sasso is the queen of the real estate mailers. I, I dubbed her that. Um, so that's not an official title. But You're actually not um, the first one who came up with that title. So, you know, um, I've heard it before. It was, maybe I should make this my thing. So Could be your brand. <laughs> Well, it, you're the queen of it on our podcast. How about that? That for sure. So Janine has, uh, we'll have to send her a tiara and a sash. Um, but um, Everybody heard anyway. that, so I will post a picture yeah. when it arrives. Oh gosh, now I have to go get a tiara and a sash. Um, all right, well, everyone, please go out and get yourself Real Estate uh, Mailers, the book, sorry, Success with Real Estate Mailers, the book, link to it on Amazon. And if you're not, a, a, you don't want to read books, she's got all sorts of audio, uh, video courses as yeah. well. Go check it out and, and written courses. She's the real deal. Um, she's also an instructor. That's her her background's education. That's what she's good at. So why not reach out and and partner with her? Check out her uh, all of the resources. The hyperlocalagent.com is where you can find everything. Janine, funny. It was funny at the very beginning before we started. I asked Janine. I go, "What social do you want me to promote?" She's like, "Nah." 
and, and, I, and then I was like, oh yeah, of course you're the mailer person. So it was, it was real, but she is also on every social platform. I am on social. She's, she's all over social. So said, say hi to her there as well, but certainly check out for 2024 guys. Let's, let's all have a better 2024 than 2023. 2023 was tough. It's tough. It was a tough year this year, but you probably weren't doing mailers. So next year probably going to be tough too. So let's go ahead and try to make it as easy on ourselves as possible, especially those of us with part-time jobs or our, 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 moms or dads, you know, raising children, your time is valuable. And, you know, just posting content of you at the gym every morning showing how fit you are. Yes, that's cool. And yes, that maybe might get you a deal or two, but that's not really, really what people want, right? People want something that is specific to their particular needs. And Janine's going to show you how to do that through her mailing system. So, all right, guys, um, Janine has to run. You've, she has been amazing. On behalf of everyone listening, Janine, thank you for your time. Janine is a very, very busy mom. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of Janine and myself, we say thank you to our audience. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Please tell a friend. Please support our sponsors. Please support Janine and reach out to her. Tell her that you loved her on this episode. She would appreciate it. All right, Janine. Thank you so much. You are amazing. Uh, We'll see everybody on the next episode. Thanks for keeping it real.